It is very well known all over the world that AIDS is an infectious disease. Also that AIDS is a transmissible and physical contagious through genital secretions, blood, that women in pregnancy can transmit the virus or AIDS to their children, and also that they can transmit the virus to, through breast milk. And since it is believed that AIDS can be transmit, transmitted through genital secretions, they are speaking about homosexual AIDS and about heterosexual AIDS. In other words, that sex is something dangerous. Never in the history of the humankind, the human beings were so challenged with a more stupid thing as saying that sex is dangerous. If sex were dangerous, none of us could be here tonight. One more belief is that AIDS is caused by a virus that belongs to a family that is called retrovirus, and the name of this virus was decided here in New York, in the Hilton Hotel, to be human immune deficiency virus. Some of the issues that I'm going to talk tonight are a little bit technical, but I'm going to, to show to you that they are not difficult at all, and they are very simple. And because sometimes people who do science, or who try to do science, they don't like to talk about technical issues with normal people, because they think that we normal people are stupid, that science is only to be talked to between scientists. But if Robert Gallo can speak about technical issues, if Anthony Fauci can speak about technical issues, any human being can talk about it. It is also very well believed all over the world that once a person is HIV positive, it's because the person is infected with a virus that is called the HIV. The other belief is that once a person is positive, the person will develop AIDS somewhere in the future. And since nowadays there are more than 30 million people all over the world that are HIV positive and they never develop AIDS, the mainstream researchers on AIDS decided to create a name for those people, the long-term term survivors, or the non-progressors. But those terms mean that the person, anyway, is going to develop AIDS and is going to die one day, because it's just that is is late. But, but, the, but that, that definition doesn't give any hope to the person anyway. And there are some more beliefs based on this. Since AIDS is supposed to be caused by a virus that is a retrovirus, so it is supposed to be treated with medication that are called antiretroviral drugs. The other belief is that the prevention and transmission of AIDS, that you can prevent the transmission of AIDS through safe sex and with antiretroviral medication. Also that you can prevent the illness itself in a person who is HIV positive. They believe that they can prevent the development of the illness, of the AIDS itself, if you use antiretroviral medications. And also, it is worldwide believed that antiretroviral medications are safe, which they are not. And we are not going to talk too much tonight about the toxicity of the drugs. But in one more, in one more, in a different occasion, we can come back to that specific issue to prove that all the medications that they are used for AIDS can cause AIDS by themselves. So, since they believe that the antiretroviral medications are safe, the other belief is that it is rational to use this kind of medications in pregnant women, in infants, in children, and in anybody else. However, when you check the scientific information. Not even, you don't need even to read our dissident views. You can just go and check slowly what Gallo writes, what Anthony Fauci writes, what the mainstream researchers on AIDS write, even what the, the doctors write about it, or what the CDC or the National Institute of Health writes about it. Read that carefully and you will find 
that nothing makes sense at all. For instance, the tests that are used for the diagnosis of HIV are highly inaccurate, as we are going to see in a few, in a few minutes. Being HIV positive does not mean that the person is infected with HIV. Being HIV positive does not mean that the person will develop AIDS in any moment. And there are scientific facts that are showing that there are more than 70 different reasons for the test to be positive without the person being infected with any HIV at all. Also, we know that AIDS is neither an infectious and is not contagious either. But even more, Dr. Peter Duesberg from California, he's a virologist who was born in Germany but has been living in this country for more than 30 years. He's a retrovirologist. He's a very conservative retrovirologist who was doing a lot of research on cancer. However, he knew for his studies in cancer that, that a, retrovi a retrovirus cannot cause any condition in animals or in plants or in human beings. It was a lot of research that was done in the 60s and in the 70s. That is the basis to prove that, biologically speaking, it's impossible for a retrovirus to cause AIDS. HIV cannot be the cause of AIDS. And for that, I'm not going to go deeply in that one either today. For that one, we're going to do another discussion one day. If some of you want to read that in detail, in the Journal of Cancer Research in 1987, March 9, 1987, 1987, Dr. Peter Duesberg wrote his very first article that is called Retroviruses as Pathogens, Expectations and Reality, with more than 200 references showing that no retroviruses can be the cause of any disease. But there is something even more serious than that, is that as we are going to see very soon, HIME may not even exist. And if it does not exist, the test for a ghost are not accurate, unless we use a ghost test. AIDS is in reality a toxic condition. And the antiretroviral drugs are highly toxic. The antiretroviral medication can cause it by themselves. And that's why pregnant women, infants, and children are much more vulnerable that other people. We, in the AIDS dissident movement, believe that AIDS is an easily curable and preventable condition. And many of the people who are here present are the proof for that. 